Uh, it's great to see the women stepping in and doing it big. One, one different for a lot of guys who do this is gay, and that's been a big issue. What do you think of the possibility of a guy from time coming out in the U.S.? Um, there's been some, there's been a couple of gay guys, I think. I don't think open, though. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, caught on video is pretty open if you ask me, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, there's also a couple of guys, not in the UFC, but in, in other events, and definitely a lot of ladies in, in other venues and MMA, so, just one big happy family. So, I mean, you're a guy that's around the gym all the time, I mean, a teammate, what, what do you think you would go through if one of your teammates or, you know, somebody around your gym uh, were to come out, what kind of struggles to deal with and, and how would you guys handle it? He'd deal with the same struggles that we have every day, which is all your best friends trying to beat the crap out of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, it wouldn't be a big deal for me. Hey, Greg, when, when you uh, have those rivalry fights, you know, everybody knows why you guys are motivated. But with Menjabar, he's like the sweetheart of a guy. I, mean, I know he is. <laughs> you know, how do you approach that? You know, you're going to be punching him in the face on Saturday. Um, you know, we've done this before and every single time. <laughs> You know, I've, I've met Ivan, he's been a stand-up individual. This sport's full of a lot of stand-up individuals, so we're, we're basically dealing with a, uh, a, whole, a whole organization of cool dudes, and uh, we punch each other in the face. That's what we do, so it's all good. Is it a rematch you ever thought about? I mean, are you shooting? You know, having that fight yeah. again, the way it ended, and all those things? I feel like it's definitely a, a fight that, that needed to happen again, just mostly because it, it was it was not not finished the right way. It was uh, uh, stopped by the doctor, and a legal kick was thrown. It wasn't caused by the legal okay. kick, but it was thrown, and there was a cut that wouldn't let the fight allow. So, um, it was seven years ago. I'm not a guy to live in the past ever, but uh, I'm always looking forward to a good fight. And I think yeah. it's going to be great. He said you guys yeah, barely got even warmed up, so there's really nothing to take from that fight. You kind of feel um, the same way? Or? Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, I had a first round against him, and it was, you know, fairly close round. I think I secured it with a takedown. And uh, then we're midway through the, the second round, and not much had happened. So uh, it's seven years ago, it's a long time ago, lots changed. It seems like you've been getting tired of talking about title shots now and where you stand in the division. I mean, you've had so many, but the division's wide open. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it, it seems is. like really one or two wins, maybe this one win. You could be right there. The rankings came out. You're right there at the top. So are you thinking about a title shot again? Uh, I'm always thinking about a title shot. I mean, this, this is a sport that I've been in for 10 years, and I've always been at the top of my weight class, and that's a testament to uh, being uh, an athletic guy, <laughs> being consistent, persistent, always getting better, changing with the times. And uh, I'm 33 years old. There's gonna be a time when I sit back and I wish, man, I wish I was 33 again. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there like that. So uh, I'm just gonna make the most out of this and and uh, and have fun doing it. You, you know, you get caught up in title this and, and money, money paydays here and this and that. And the bottom line is, I love this sport, man. It's, it's such an awesome sport. And, uh, it's something that that I do because I love it. And, and and everything else is secondary to that. How much different is it with banging camp? Is it, is, is it like a reinvention of a camp? Is it just a little change of what you've been doing? What's it like? We've had a great program for a long time at Team Alpha Male. What we're missing is somebody to be only focused on developing our younger guys, coming up with game plans for our established guys, uh, constructive, really, really constructive practices that are thought out and uh, dissecting tape, and, and Dwayne is is 120% on that. He's he's doing so amazing at, at what we brought him in to do, and, and we're really fortunate to have him. In addition to everyone else, we have Master Tong, Fabio Prado, Dustin Akbari, Justin Buckles, and then all the co-op. I have Lance, and Chad, and myself, and Joseph, and TJ. I mean, we've got a great camp going on. What, what's Dwayne's lesson? Dwayne Ludwig. Oh, Dwayne Ludwig. Dwayne Bang. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. Fastest, unofficial fastest knockout in UFC history. Yeah. <laughs> when did you, when did he uh, join the camp? You know, when I was in China, I was in Hong Kong, Macau, and Singapore, and uh, my guys at home were disgruntled. Whenever I leave the nest, it's like everybody's talking about what needs to happen and this and that, and they were lacking some structure. And uh, I just made a list of people that I thought would be awesome coaches, and then I started crossing off people that I knew had gyms and, and things like that. And then I came up with Dwayne, who I've always respected a lot, and I've thought the world of as a fighter, and he's always been a stand-up individual. He's given me some free advice just uh, as, a, as a fighter in the passing. And I, and I, I called him and I said, hey man, just show your number. He, he, uh, he hit me up and said, uh, yeah, and I asked him you know, a couple couple questions, and you know, a week later he was out to come check out the camp, and it worked out great. And so his official title there is what? Head coach. Head coach? Yeah. 
Has he ever been like uh, in this kind of position where he's you know actually in charge of dissecting everything and like you said running a, a whole camp? I think Dwayne's been a teacher since he, his early 20s and um, he's he's kind of the leader of all the guys out in Colorado. I think uh, Shane Carwin and the guys that train out of that that area are you know Dwayne is kind of the guy they looked up to I think and. Uh, and so we kind of swiped them from them, but we're really appreciative for him making the move. Is it hard for you at all to kind of like, I don't want to say seed control, but I mean, that's kind of been your team and, and you're the, the veteran and the leader to, to step back and just listen to him, put your trust in what he says? I've always been like that. I've, you know, as, as far as being a leader on the team, that's 100% what I am. I've, I've given a lot of knowledge, but my, for the most part, I was leading by example and, and encouraging the guys on the mental side. But for me, the whole... The whole process, I mean, it was still about me. As a professional athlete, somebody's trying to be the best in the world, you have to be about yourself, and that's what my training is about. It's about you know making sure that I'm doing my thing and dissecting my fight and stuff like that. So it's good to have somebody that's doing that for everyone. You're right, no excuses, but... You know, how difficult was that fight at 149? I gotta believe that, you know, you and Dominic had gone to media dinners, you'd been on a reality show, it was a really important fight for the division and for you guys. And then you gotta face, you know, Hannon Burrell, and it just seems like a pretty difficult spot to be at your best game. Was, it, was that true at all? Um, I always like to feel like I go out and, and, and put my best fight on, best possible. Uh, I did have a lot of the, the excitement drawn out of that fight for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, monetarily, you know, I spent three months promoting one date and, and against a, a certain opponent and it was on a huge card and things like that. And it's hard not to focus on that stuff more than 10 years in the sport to get those big paydays and stuff like that. Uh, also, a change of opponent. No one really knows who Brow is. Now still more they do, but I mean, I think he had like 3,000 followers on Twitter at that point. And, and uh, the biggest name on the undercard was Chet Congo. Who, He's a great fighter, but still was, was kind of a, uh, took a lot of the steam out of the, the engine, but I always go out there and fight 100%. I mean, I could be in my backyard by myself, or I could be uh, in front of millions of people, or, you know, it doesn't matter. I always go out and throw out my best, but yeah, it, was, it took a little of the steam out of my engine. So you, did you feel that at all, like, like prior to the fight in the locker room, or you were almost trying to get yourself up for it, and, and maybe just a little bit different than another fight? Um, not really. I, I'm, I'm good at brainwashing myself, so I just stay out of that mind space. Uh, right when it first started happening, when I was getting pulled off the car in, in Las Vegas, I was getting a little bit of that, and I just it was taking the fun out of it for me, so I had to put on the back burner. Did, was there any kind of a hangover effect from that fight? Did you have to get away from the sport a little bit, or were you right back in the camp and thinking about how you'd come back and where you'd sit back in the division and things like that? Uh, again, it, it just it just came back to uh, to doing what I love and, and remembering what I have to focus on and, and not worrying about the monetary things and, and things like that and knowing that uh, what's got me here today is just focusing on making myself better and, and being great. You've been asked this before, but are you thinking about, you know, what's beyond fighting at all yet or do you think you still have plenty of good years left? We all know that you're a good businessman, you could walk away and probably do something else. Where are you, where are you in that? Um, you know, yeah, I've got a lot of gray hairs, and I've had knee surgeries, and been knocked out a bunch, so I think I'm going to call it quits after this. Uh, no, I, I'm far oh. from being done. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, I've had my, my, my toughest fights have been decision fights with guys like Jose Aldo, Dominic Cruz, Renan Barral, uh, you know, face some adversity. I'm, I'm, I feel great. I feel amazing. Um, yeah, I've, I haven't even taken any supplements yet, you know. <laughs> I haven't taken a protein shake or anything, so I might get on some caffeine for the first time in my life and uh, maybe some creatine or something and look into, look into some, some things that I start to feel like I'm falling off. But right now, I'm on top of the world, man. Yeah. Looks like Brock Cruz is next as a guy that's, that's been in there with both of them. you have any thoughts on how that matchup will play out? You know, I feel like uh, I fought both of them. Dominic moves a lot more. And as far as doing damage, I, I felt like I took about the same amount of damage from both guys. I had a slight broken rib uh, against Burrell. I actually, I actually had a full broken rib against Burrell. I had a slight broken rib against Dominic, and it was a couple of leg kicks were the difference. And, um, I think, although Dominic moves more, Burrell was harder for me to hit and do damage to. And uh, so it's going to come up to a matchup. I, I think it's going to be a really good matchup. If it's a finish, I'm going 100% with Burrell. If it's uh, 
If it's a decision, I'm going 70, 70, 30, dumb. I spoke with Michael McDonald after the fight the other night, and he said Barra was the strongest bantamweight he's ever been in there. Did, did you notice that? That he felt like a, a stronger fighter than, than maybe some of the other guys in the division? I don't think we even really touched each other, man. I mean, there's no takedowns, there's no big knockdowns. He landed some combos on me that were like pretty grazing, even though they were pretty powerful. Uh, so I didn't get to feel his strongest punch. He didn't feel my strongest punch. I don't, actually, I did hit him with some good punches. He can he can take a punch. He didn't even barely move. So uh, I got to give him credit on that on that front. Um, but we didn't really lock up too much. So I think McDonald uh, has yet to face some of the strongest guys in the division. You've been around the sport you know, a long time. Obviously, you've seen a lot of guys go through injuries. How how much of him or just for himself do you think I'm going to be? Everything's in the mind, you know. I've fought with major injuries, and it all comes down to uh, to whether you let that handicap you. I mean, I've fought championship fights at a weight above what I am right now, with broken hands and, and battered legs, and, and it's a decision. So if Dominic decides he wants to come back and be the best he can be, I believe he can. Is a rubber match with Dominic or what important to you as, as another title shot? No. Uh, I'd rather fight Ronda Rousey at this point. She's got 185,000 followers on Twitter. Dominic has about 75, so. Ronda, let's do this. <laughs>